Welcome back to our fourth installment. Uh, here is about where we left off uh, with a number of perfect cubes. Uh, now we're going to be uh, kind of putting the finishing touches on these and uh, what I'm doing here is clamping them all in a vise and then running a uh, .109 round over or radius cutter over the edges to kind of take that sharp edge off because that edge is quite sharp. Uh, I'm trying to sort of do this the most efficient way possible with the tools I have so I'm uh, kind of clamping like nine in a vise that's as many as I can fit across and get full clamping uh, pressure on, on the entire face of the die. Uh, the only problem I ran into here was when I was uh, machining like when I was mixing and matching uh, cubes from different bars that I cut there there would be some minor extremely minor variations in tolerance and sometimes one wouldn't clamp tight and that uh, tool as it hit it would pull it up out of the vise and it would kind of wreck the piece um, unbelievably that that radius cutter had suffered maybe three or four crashes like that and is yet to chip or sustain any kind of damage uh, which is more than can be said for the uh, cube that it pulled out of the vise, which it generally chew it up really bad, and I'd have to discard it. So I'm just tapping them in, making sure they're all uh, seated well against the parallels. I'm a big fan of the uh, fast forward motion on a lot of these clips that are just boring if you watch them in real time. Unfortunately you just kind of have to cut titanium pretty slowly. And then I just flip them over and tamp them back down. You got to be careful to uh, not so much on this part, but you don't want any edges that have burrs on them to to be in any sort of critical face. Like you don't want a die that has a burr on it to butt up to another die, because then it won't uh, sit square. And, and especially you don't want it to butt up like the the burr. You don't want it to clamp into the vise, because that will not allow the the die to sit square. So here I am just taking those corner. Uh, edges off because the corners were quite sharp too. Even after you radius them it would result in a kind of a sharp point. You can sort of see there. And I thought wow that would really if you were to roll these on a wooden table or something it would really <laughs> do some damage on the table. These should probably be used on a felt table. Even with the radius. They do have a little bit of heft to them, being titanium. I experimented with putting in, putting the vise in, or putting the piece in two different places in the vise on that corner, like one side of the vise, and then have another one on the other side just to balance the pressure. And then I thought, well, maybe, maybe it might be easier to just put it in the middle. So I tried it that way. Really, I didn't notice a difference. And here they are uh, with the radius edges and corners and ready for the pips. <clears throat> now I'm using an eighth inch ball mill here. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before. I think I did on the first, on the first video uh, where I was making the titanium dice. I had to vary the depth that the pip is drilled so it's basically a, a, a semi sphere and uh, by varying the depth you can ensure that the exact same amount of material is removed from each face so the face with the one pip is quite a bit deeper than the face with the six pips
and I was trying to get a process down here and after after kind of drilling the pips with the ball mill they do leave a little just a slight burr around the edge of the pip so I would just kind of very gently hit it with um, some fine grit sandpaper 600 grit I think just to take that burr off because these uh, once the pip once the face with the pip is, is milled, you don't want that burr uh, butting up to the adjacent die or butting up into the vice jaw because then they just won't sit square and the uh, alignment will be off. I don't know if you can notice from the video, but you can see the pips kind of getting uh, shallower and shallower as they increase in number. I ended up going back in the code and uh, making it so the uh, x-axis motion doesn't have to reverse back and forth as it drills these so it, the x-axis is going in the constant direction not really a big deal but if there was any backlash issues um, that would potentially fix it but this mill has very very little backlash it has basically no uh, perceptible backlash on the z-axis so it's less than a tenth and uh, the x and y axis are both about four thousand four tenths I'm sorry a backlash so after we have all the pips drilled uh, we move on to the next step, which I believe is okay. Yeah, we break out the polishing wheel here, and uh, I'm using some number what is that? Number four polish, I think, or no, it's number two polish to just uh, polish up the edges because uh, we won't be doing anything else to the edges and corners. So I want to get a nice polish on them. So I believe this is like number. Number two is what I said. And just more and more buffing. This was a pretty tedious day. My uh, back was killing me at the end of this, and my hands are cramping up, clamping those die in my fingers. I didn't want to lose one. So after buffing them, uh, some kind of black residue was left over them, I guess from the wax that uh, melts off of the buffing wheel as you polish these. But I wanted to get it all off of there and uh, before I switched to the new grit buffing wheel, just so I don't cross-contaminate them. So I came up with this kind of goofy idea just to streamline the process of wiping them down. I used a, just a clamp and some one two three blocks to clamp them and flip them over started getting really discouraged about the uh, amount of manual <laughs> labor I was spending on these simple steps I'm 
I wasn't able to quite clamp them all that time, so I just kind of did them in groups of four. Okay, so here we are. I think this is number four polished now. So we're just kind of after we after we polish the edges and corners with the number two polish, we're going to like a finer polish, which is number four. It's the white one. I had a number five, but at this time I didn't have any more buffing wheels to put the number five on. But I don't really think it needed it. I mean, the number two pretty much made those edges and corners like mirrors. So now we start the uh, surface plate honing of the faces to uh, get a, a nice uniform finish on all the faces because they still show some machine marks at this point. So I'm putting some honing oil on there and uh, the sandpaper close, closest to us is 600 grit and then the one furthest from us is uh, 1500 grit. And the, this gives a very fine finish. So I do a few uh, swipes with the uh, 600 grit until the face is kind of has a uniform surface, uniform finish, and then I hit it with the 15 grit. It doesn't polish it, but it puts a very fine looking finish on it. Almost, almost polished. In fact, the uh, sandpaper is called polished, but it doesn't quite polish it. This was again also a very tedious job. This ended up spanning about two days. My back and hands just couldn't take it. Care must be taken to uh, make sure you're applying uniform pressure. And uh, it's not that difficult to do when you have such a flat surface like a granite surface plate. The one I'm using is a uh, inspection grade, so it's uh, accurate to within, I think, a half a tenth over its surface, which is just insane. But as long as you're applying uniform downward pressure, it, it pretty much uh, does the entire face evenly. And then after that, I washed them off again and then I hit them with a little bit of the number two uh, polish on the faces just to get some of that grit off and then oh here we are uh, I was experimenting with a box idea I thought the caliber of these dice require their own custom box so uh, that'll be in the next video that was kind of an interesting process but here they are after they've had a bath and uh, before they get their wax job